Okay, we're now in front of uh, Soft Red Winter Wheat Field. We're still in the state of Ohio. We're in Martinsville, Ohio with a farmer friend, Ed Winkle here. Uh, he's been kind enough to give us our first interview, farmer interview, and Ed, uh, looks like you've started to harvest some wheat here. Ohio is about 4% harvested thus far. Uh, looks like a really good uh, wheat field here. What, what, are you, uh, what are you seeing? We, I plant wheat for, uh, as I told you, I always, whenever we combine, we plant something else. And last year, the beans come off September 28th. It was a perfect time to plant something. And uh, the wheat seed was about as, uh, a little bit cheaper than a cover crop seed, or we would have planted a cover crop. So we planted Ohio certified lion uh, wheat and with, with the hopes of uh, selling some for seed and selling some on the market for uh, cookies and crackers, of course. And uh, they always said uh, we were the state for Oreo cookies. Okay. And that's a big market here. There's two good millers within uh, 50 miles of here. They like our wheat and uh, we've got a really good crop. It fits well in my rotation because we're fighting re resistant weeds and anything to throw the pests, the weeds out of sync. Uh, wheat fits in my rotation. And what are you seeing in terms of yields here? We're over 100 bushel an acre on this and that's, that's two years back to back and that I've not done that for a long time so 100 bushel yield was my record in 85 and I was unable to break that for a long long time so we finally got varieties and technology that uh, can make okay. the wheat perform a little better. And this year we've had some pretty good ideal almost perfect growing conditions is that what you've seen here? I thought we had too much water we've had almost 45 inches of water on this field uh, since October 1st when it was planted and uh, normally that's too much it only needs about 25 inches right. uh, but but it's it uh, it's held its own it's it's made a good crop we don't have vomitoxin in it that's a that's a threat in uh, western states that has been an issue yeah. yes it has yeah. and we were concerned about it. I saw saw just a few white heads and I saw one little dab of pink whenever I see a little pink on a on a kernel that's that's bad news and so we very minimal and now in the distance I see the the harvesting going on and it sounds like you said you you either you you drill something behind that uh, harvester you're you're planting either beans or cover crop uh, I've learned over the last few years to uh, this my soil needs to be covered my, I have a lot of highly rateable soils old worn out non-productive soils and uh, when we start to combine we like to have the drill loaded with some crop uh, it may be a cover crop for, uh, going to, for corn, trying to build nitrogen and, and, uh, and soil life, but we try to have something growing all the time. Okay. And now earlier we were talking and uh, you mentioned you were on an earlier tour going further east, Pennsylvania, New York State. What did, what did you uh, conclude from the, your tour? I thought Pennsylvania was all over the board as far as uh, planting date and crop height. New York was really late. I would be concerned if I were them uh, for early frost. But uh, as you came out of Cleveland uh, uh, towards Vermilion, Ohio, uh, southern Michigan, northern Ohio, the crops were just growing like, uh, like crazy. Uh, gr great growing conditions. Everywhere I've been in the Midwest is, look, just looks excellent. So in your opinion, this uh, new buzzword, the greenhouse effect, I think that continues. Uh, you think it's possible that corn could achieve a 170, 180 yield this year? From what I've seen, I, I know I, I'd like to have the better price and say the yield wasn't there, but I think the yield is there. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.